Elias in. Let's see. We got 15 viewers in here. What's up? Is six plyo exercises. Are six plyo exercises with about 124 jumps and three or four sets and exercises too much? Can I build up to it? Yes, you can build up to it for sure. One of the big as aspects that I wanted to cover is how to build athletic muscle in the gym. And so I think the big thing right off the bat is understanding, one, what is athletic muscle? And if we can just uh, define that as simply as possible. And I think looking at athletic muscle, especially um, in the realm of sports performance, we want to build hypertrophic muscle that can coordinate at high speeds through various angles, through various joint angles, joint degrees, and at the speed required or the intensity required, okay? So in some research, I'm going to share right here, in some papers, we've seen that in the potential role of the myosin head for strength gain in hypertrophied muscle, we've actually seen that there is a period when a certain amount of muscle that gets built, okay? So if we build, uh, and everybody, I love to use this term of muscular architecture, okay? So when we're building muscular architecture <clears throat> and enhancing that muscular architecture, as the muscle starts to hypertrophy, there's a point where the actin and the myosin link is not being made and it's basically dormant. Okay. And so I want to try to relate this to where, um, there's points where a lot of people will say, um, all right, well, do you want to build a, a substantial amount of muscle mass or do you want to build somebody who's rapid and coordinated and explosive as possible? And so, And so some of the stuff that, um, what do you want me to do here? Just keep talking. And so <clears throat> I can see the chat over there. I don't know if that helps. Yeah. Yo, Dane is live. And so some of the stuff that we end up thinking about, okay, is that, um, yes, I am early, Keith. That's a, that should be a, that's a PR for me, isn't it? Um, and so some of the stuff that we have to look at, I, and I brought up uh, an aspect here. I'm thinking through the lens of someone like Charlie Francis, okay? And he was Ben Johnson's sprint coach. He's probably like this big-time, you know, fairly well-known sprint coach. And they would do a lot of general strength training, okay? A lot of general strength work. Uh, and even to the point where Ben Francis or Ben Johnson would even be doing things like bench press to help improve uh, his global uh, do you want me to record this on here as well? Because this is not recording. I forgot to hit that. Yes, please. Sorry. I'm sorry, Jason. Uh, even to the point where um, Ben Johnson was known for even doing bench press. And the reason being is that uh, using an exercise like a bench press, even though he was a 100-meter sprinter, um, it would help him recruit more effectively. It would help him uh, enhance his global neurological recruitment. Okay? And so in turn... He would do these things after sprint work. Yes, he tested positive for Winstrol. And I'm going to say this over and over and over again. That doesn't mean the principles of their training are disregarded. So we have to just keep that in mind. Now, <clears throat> neural control of matched motor units is another paper that sort of goes into um, looking at how we can neurologically recruit uh, motor units, and then essentially trigger the actin and myosin heads to start to function a little bit more athletically, a little bit more effectively. And so going through this athletic muscle, some of the uh, definitions, some of the key concepts here is that if we can build an athlete who becomes somewhat hypertrophic, and then at the same time, take those hypertrophic muscles by using um, specified training methods that can build power, build strength, improve speed, and lead to increased hypertrophy. And now that actin myosin link becomes more effective. The neurological uh, link becomes more effective. And in turn, over a long period of time, we develop that athletic muscle. It does take time, but it will happen. And the, the role of the coach, or in our case, you know, with what we're doing with peak strength is that we can find very specific points in training through exposure phase or through comprehension phase and then back to summit phase or back to ascension phase, depending upon where we're at in our training. We can determine 
okay, this is where we can build more muscular size. Okay, this is where we need to really, really focus on uh, athleticism, power development, and, and max strength. And so I, I think it becomes this unique um, method or protocol to try to, to develop that athletic muscle. And one of the major qualities of athletic muscle is going to be looking at, uh, in, the, in the common world of sports performance, uh, the, the term speed strength. Okay, so if we're looking at speed strength, um, which is transmitting and absorbing force at very high speeds. Okay. That's essentially what speed strength comes down to. And I like to think about it. If I'm doing like an absolute strength movement, like a back squat or a, a single leg squat, a bench press, um, then we would be moving. We would be doing that at like 0.95 meters per second to like two plus meters per second squared. Okay. Or two plus meters per second. So it'd be, pretty freaking fast if we are doing so that's one way that we can train uh speed strength and before i move forward you know when we're looking at these exercises to build athletic muscle the best way to build this is to think through the lens of impulse okay so impulse would be um force in time okay how much force can you apply during a time frame and so going back to that ben johnson example or going back to that sprint sprinter example um we would take a sprinter and impulse every time that they ground. They have this very, very, very short time frame to apply a massive amount of force back into the ground to then get it back into themselves to propel themselves down the track. That's called impulse. Okay, so if we take that concept and now think of speed strength, essentially that time frame for, for a sprinter is very short. Okay, the time frame for an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman to make helmet contact might be 0.4 seconds. So it's a little bit longer, but it's still pretty quick. That's speed strength. That's impulse in my mind. That's what impulse is. Okay. And I think that in the realm of sports performance, that's what we're going to see. We're going to see people really start to, to take on the concept of impulse versus um, power or versus um uh, or, or versus speed strength because it's going to be then designated in time frames. I believe that there's like, so we use blast impulse, we use sustained impulse, and these are time frames that are sort of designated uh, based off of based off of how much time you're getting. Okay, so if we're looking at absolute strength movements with um, some type of velocity, okay, some type of velocity tracking on it, uh, the next thing that you could do, you could do something like um, sprinting with a sled. Okay, so you do sled sprints, um, you could do sled marches, you could do a little bit, you know, on this on this force velocity curve, you could do a little bit more towards the velocity base with a little bit lighter load. I would start with like 10% if you're trying to improve your, your locomotive capability. Um, and then if we get into plyometrics, you know, plyometrics are going to drastically improve uh, your ability to apply speed strength or to develop speed strength. And it's also going to improve your impulse because there's a short time frame. Okay. So you have a short time frame to express a large amount of force. Uh, so you could do hurdle hops, you could do stair jumps, you could do jump lunges, anything like that, right? The next aspect would be um, reflexive strength movement. So you've seen us do something like the the Lynch jump series or um, even doing like a dumbbell drop snatch to a box. That's another way to develop uh, to develop that that capability or that ability to have athletic muscle. And so that's another key component. So when people are saying like, well, there's, there's not really any evidence that athletic muscle exists. Yes, there is. There is evidence because now if we look at, and using the Ben Johnson comparison, let's go back to that. Ben Johnson got popped for Winstrol, okay? So he tested positive for Winstrol. There's a lot of dudes at the local gyms here anywhere that are bodybuilders that are all taking Winstrol. Are they all fast? No. But what ends up happening is that if you take someone like Ben Johnson, who was using Winstrol, a performance enhancing drug, he built up strength through general performance. Then he became more athletic with that muscle by doing the active action of sprinting, of single leg bounding, of running with sprints and things along those lines. So we do need to recognize that if we can improve the coordination and if we can improve um, the way that the actin and myosin link in a, in a newer uh, developed hypertrophic muscle, 
then long term it becomes more athletic. Okay, so that's like a, a a big key concept. And again, it just goes down to using real simple exercises. You know, if we're building out our program inside peak strength, we've got day one would be a leg power day, right? So you're focusing on being explosive um, with heavy weight, right? So you're doing cleans, you're doing back squats. Uh, those will also improve speed strength. Those will improve impulse. Those will improve athletic muscle. Now, how? Some other research, and we've covered this recently in other lives, have shown us that just doing six weeks of back squats and cleans will improve your 510 5 shuttle. Okay. Just doing six weeks of back squats and cleans will improve your 20 meter sprint. Literally, just doing those things will lead to an improvement in six weeks. Now, if we take that and we go a little bit more specific um, and we start to figure out, okay, if we have uh, upper you know, leg power day, then we got upper body power day. Now, day three, we're going to start doing more plyometric work. We're going to start to do more uh, you know, PVC pipe walks and we're doing you know, single leg bounds. We're doing double leg bounds. We're doing the hide and jumps. We're doing stair jumps. We're doing all these crazy plyometric movements and reflexive movements. That's another day to really develop impulse, which is a day to develop that athletic muscle. And then obviously impulse day, that's day four for us. Now we're using more uh, of the traditional uh, absolute strength movements. And we're gonna even use little hacks like, okay, let's do a time set, okay? So let's do a set as fast as possible at a certain weight and time that the number of reps. So let's say we do five reps, single leg squat, 60 kilos. How fast can I get that done? And we do that over four to eight weeks and we try to slowly increase the wheat and decrease the time. Now we're improving our speed strength based off of a time set. We can also do something like an unbroken set. So you take off a bench and you're one, two, three, four, five, unbroken as fast as possible. Okay. And another unique way speaking about the bench press would be doing like a pad bench. You put a pad on your chest and you're doing something very, very fast, very explosively with a really, really rapid stretch shortening cycle. That's going to improve our speed strength. That's going to improve our athletic muscle. That's going to improve our impulse expression. That's going to make us that better athlete. Okay, so those are the real, real big key concepts um, around that. And if you're looking at programming yourself, okay, you've got to look at, okay, what days am I going to focus on power and strength? What days am I going to focus on uh, speed and strength? What days am I going to focus on possibly strength and, and, and mass? Okay, and then you, you have to figure out, okay, this is... These two days are when I'm focusing on power and strength. These days is when I'm going to focus on more speed, strength, and, uh, and, and that athleticism capability. And this day is going to be when we're focusing more on hyper hypertrophy work to continuously build that cycle. And then long term, that's just going to lead to greater success. So I think I just wanted to cover like the, that athletic muscle aspect up front and see if, what kind of questions you guys had. Before we get into this a little bit further, last week in our live, we did announce that we were going to give someone a full year of peak strength for free one full year of peak strength for free so this is the last day to get up to 70 and i'm going to give you some more uh, of our discounts from black friday cyber monday and so today's the last day to get up to 75 percent off of all of our digital content you can go over to garage you can get 75 percent off some of our old pdf some of our other uh programs that we have all of our coaching courses, even our course that breaks down our entire training system, Garage Strength Program Design, is 50% off. Okay, so everything that I just covered around athletic muscle, we cover in Garage Strength Program Design. Everything that we do inside of our, our old school PDF programs, the old school PDF programs, 75% off. Garage Strength Program Design, currently 50% off. Head over to garagestrength.com. You can pick that up. We might have gone a little overboard with some of these deals, but... You guys should be taking advantage of that. Now, the peak strength giveaway from last week that we talked about last week. Last Tuesday, we stated someone's getting a full year for free. And we've been running this huge giveaway to give three new users this entire year of access uh, to our app for free. So three of you are going to win it. We're going to announce one here shortly. You still have time to activate or to get into peak strength you download the trial you activate the trial and there's still going to be two slots left that we're going to be giving away uh that after today the first one we're going to be dishing out here shortly now you have until midnight tonight to get into this uh into this giveaway but you've got to download peak strength activate your trial by midnight tonight okay and then you're going to have two more chances to try and get peak strength for free for a full freaking year so but Let's announce who 
is the winner right now. Can I can I do the little? I need a I need a snare drum. I need a snare drum. I need that snare drum sound. Right here on the live, that person is drum roll, please. Alec Wilkins. Alec Wilkins. Alec, all you've got to do if you're watching is that you have to check your emails tomorrow with a confirmation after we select our other two winners. Okay. So Alec Wilkins, if you're watching, stay tuned. You're gonna get your e you're gonna get your email confirmation after we select the other two so that we can dish this out to you. Uh, the winners accounts will be upgraded for a full year of access to Peak Strength. Remember there's still time for new users new users to sign up uh, and activate their trial. You've got about nine hours left until we close out those entries. Alec Wilkins doesn't matter. You already got that full year for free. Let's think about this. Now let's put ourselves in Alec Wilkins. Uh, I just saw Andrew said, Oh my gosh, I hope it's me. Let's, let's, let's go through it. I'm going to, I'm going to go back into the, into the chat here. Cause you guys, I can see, I can see the chat coming up on YouTube. Don't worry. I'm going to answer that. These questions here shortly, but I did want to just point out here. You guys have, um, you still have nine hours left too, because you can use this code new to peak 40 to get 40% off your first month uh, of peak strength. Okay. New to peak 40. Now, what I wanted to, to, to do here was think about this. Think about, um, when you're, when you're, when you're thinking about Alec Wilkins. Okay. So Alec just got that full year of training. Let's say Alec just trains 50 years out of 52. 50 years out of 52 or 50 weeks, sorry, 50 weeks out of 52. Okay. So the next 50 weeks, he gets into the gym four times a week. Okay. He goes in the gym four days a week for the next 50 weeks. He does squats, snatches, benches, you know, push presses. He does plyometric work. He does potentially hypertrophy work or impulse work, whatever his goals are. He sets those peak dates. He goes through a 16 week program, 20 week program, you know, takes a week off, then comes back and goes through another 16 week program, 20 week program. He does that, you know, two and a half times, 50 weeks, 50 weeks of training, 200 training sessions. Think about what that's going to do for Alec. And the fact that he just freaking won a full year of that 200 plus training sessions for him to become a freak athlete. That's exactly what we're trying to do for you guys is to pro provide that easy access to freak training. That's everything that we're trying to do all the time. So every single day, every single week, you hit that four for four, you have that vision set, you have that goal set, you get into the gym and you execute over and over and over again to just try to become that champion. Okay, you cultivate that power nice and deep. And Andrew's even commenting in the chat here. Andrew just hit um, 51 out of 52 weeks in his first year in peak strength. He missed one week while he was moving. I think I only missed two scheduled workouts. It did a lot for me. Uh, Andrew, thanks a, thanks a lot. That, that's freaking awesome. Isaiah, you can re-sign up on peak strength for sure. Uh, and now I'm going to hit some of these um I'm going to hit some of these questions here. Nice comments, even in Instagram. You guys in Instagram are chiming in. All right, let's see. Hey, coach, what would you say is the best six-day workout split for trying to put on muscle? Six-day workout split, I would hit um, I would hit a leg power day, an upper body power day, an athlete day, an impulse day. I'd probably have two hypertrophy days uh, if you're trying to really build – muscle i would say two hypertrophy days there would be something big um rambler saying you guys can't see the chat uh, someone tell tell coach they need to sign in to see the chat did you tell the ad of south dakota that you sport only fans lgbt what are you talking about proper english what are you doing why do you people in here god does the pad bench stimul simulated banded bench press or rate weight okay I would probably say the pad bench simulates more of the, um, yeah, I would say it sim simulates more of an actual like banded bench press. That's the way I would roll with it. Uh, what would you do training for a football combine walk-on tryout? If, if I was trying to do a football tryout, okay, 
if I genuinely was interested in trying to try out for a football team, especially like a collegiate tryout to walk on, I would take my shit really seriously. I would go in and start training really freaking hard, four lifts a week, two days of sprints, uh, and, and really just hammer down your recovery. Um, because that is not going to be easy to make that team. Hey, Dane, how can you mix weights and calisthenics for athletes? LOL, BG. Uh, so the way we mix weights and, and calisthenics is that we we hammer big-time weight movements earlier in the week, okay? And then we'll do plyometric stuff, which would be calisthenics. We also will use calisthenic exercises uh, to improve strength. Um, it really is just dependent upon... Um, you know, the time of year, but calisthenic exercises are great. They're absolutely, absolutely great. Um, yeah, five minutes early was probably my PR. It's uncharted territory for Dane to be early. This is crazy. What's up, everybody? So, oh, somebody commented, oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, the marathon metal paperweight. So, uh, yeah, Lulu, 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 six days of the Lulu. Um, yes, this is my sweet, check this out. This is my sweet marathon participation trophy. And I wanted to mention, I'm not a huge marathon. I'm not a huge participation trophy person. Okay. But I do this. First of all, this is sick. And also just running a marathon was really, really hard, challenging mentally, physically. Um, dude, it was rough. And I'm am actually proud of it i've never really been super there's a couple things i've done athletically deadlifting 705 pounds uh qualifying for indoor nationals in track um qualifying for nationals and weightlifting running a marathon qualifying for ncaa's in track those are some things that i'm very proud of and ironically i've got this little medal here uh to 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 sport so are isometrics like squats against immovable resistance useful so i really like that i like using um i would call those like if i would go down in partial range of motion into that immovable object go back down go back into that immovable object i do think that's very very effective uh, and it can be very hard with that contest context what goes into structuring and creating plans and regiments for your athletes um as far as creating plans and uh res regimens for my athletes as far as just trying to think like that's i mean i feel like i laid that out pretty well um can you can doing plyometrics on sand be better for improvement rather than on normal ground i don't think it's necessarily better i think it can be uh it can beat you up a little bit less um i think you could probably get a little bit more volume i know you know jerry rice walter payton used to talk about back in the day like uh, hammering out more hill sprints in the sand, doing more cutting. Uh, they believe that had a, a greater role in development of their uh, of their joints. Uh, I just saw that there's a there's a survey up right now on YouTube. So if you guys head over to YouTube or if you're in YouTube, there's a survey for me to do an ultra marathon. Which what's that? What is that? 100 miles? Something crazy? Uh, question about peak strength. I got it for my son, 12 years old. Is there a way for it set it to set it for a multi sport athlete, or should I just do I just change a program for his current in-season sport? This is from Laser5050. What I would do, um, Laser, is that I would actually um, I would set this, the, the peak date for the specific sport that he's playing at that time. And then as you get to a certain point in the year, if he's shifting the, the sport, right then you would just change that sport program so if let's say he's wrestling in the winter time or swimming in the winter time then he's going to play baseball in the in the spring when wrestling or swimming is over you would shift that to baseball that's how we set that up um it's only freaks when are we going to get the gs only freaks website uh, i don't have money for your workout plan nor have the equipment to do any of the exercises so big bergs inside of peak strength uh we actually have like a you you can select what equipment that you have so if you only have a barbell, you could just put in barbell. If you don't have anything, we you're still going to get a body weight and a, a calisthenics program out of that. I started training basketball. Could you tell me how to create the workout split and plan? Ultra Ironman. What is an Ultra Ironman? Is that like you run a marathon, you swim? How far do they swim and bike in, a, in an Ironman? Um, okay, so if I was going to set up a basketball training plan in season... The first thing I need to do is how many days a week 
Yeah, hang on. Yo, coach, we need more videos for boxing, less for the gym because not everyone got access to a gym. For you, it's a much bigger audience. Um, Christian, the only thing I would say is I don't know enough about boxing specifically to make videos on that. Um, going back to the basketball, I have been working on my 100-meter sprint so far, 60 meters. What would you recommend to improve, 60 to 100? 60 to 100, run 150s, run more hill sprints, um, a lot of dynamic trunk control work, some more single leg work. And so if I was looking for building a basketball plan, the biggest thing I would do is, one, how tall are you? Two, what are your big goals? Um, how far do you want to go? Three, uh, some of the other big factors that you can do is say, like, how many days a week can I train? So if I could train uh, four days a week, well, then one day is going to be developing leg strength, right? One day is going to be about actually working on the upper body. One day is going to be, like, basketball-specific jumping. And then one day is going to be either, depending upon if you're really weak, you can do more uh, hypertrophy-based work. Uh, if you're small, I mean, and if you're slower, I would do more impulse based work. So that's sort of how you would roll through uh, building that out. And then you look at the specific exercises that you're not that good at. Can you do a power clean? Can you do a single leg squat? Can you do a walking lunges w without falling forward? Can you do a Cossack squat? You know, and you just build out based off of that. Um, okay. So what program on the peak strength app will help me get bouncy? I want to increase my vertical jump. I would go into the jumps for long jump or high jump. Okay. So we've got a couple sweet programs specific to that. Basketball also is another great one and volleyball. Volleyball is a great one as well. Will the shot put athlete program work for baseball pitchers? Shot put athlete program. It could, it could in theory. Yeah, it could. Um, okay. So here we got solidarity coming in how do i hype myself up for a lunch break 5k when it's cold outside i think like i think about this when i so if i'm waking up early in the morning and i'm i'm sort of miserable and i don't want to i don't want to train right i don't want to go out for a run i'm tired whatever i'd rather sleep in bed the bed's nice and cozy we got the wood stove ripping it's nice the house is warm i think the biggest thing that you've got to do is just remind yourself of what those goals are and also make it a challenge for the day you know so solidarity like i would i would actually be like look dude just go out and run a 5k can you run it in 33 minutes like can you get under 11 minute miles like just for fun you know what's can you match your you know 95 percent of your or, or you know i want to try and get 10,000 steps in by two in the afternoon you go out and run a three a 5k and that's going to happen and i think it's like playing those mind games goes a really really long way because when you're not playing the mind games um, you just sort of get into that dreadful zone and it makes it hard. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's good to do something like that. Okay. So keys came in, uh, wrestling strength standards. We have, okay. We do have those. I think we actually have those inside the garage strength program design. Um, we do have the app is suitable for the marathon runner doing four runs a week. I was doing five to six runs a week and I was following the marathon strength training program, um, all the way up to about a week out. Uh, so that's what I was doing as far as the Ironman. So you swim 3,800 meters. So how far is that? How far is 3,800 meters? It's gotta be something like a mile, right? You bike 180 kilometers. So if there's 40, so you're biking like a hundred miles and then you're running a marathon. So you, it must be bike a hundred miles, um, so uh, almost a 4k that's got to be what is that that's crazy so there's a 500 meter swim that's 20 laps usually right or 10 laps so now you're looking at holy crap dude that's insane do we have an in-season high school swimmer who wants to be ready for lacrosse any suggestions for in-season that would help prep for lacrosse so the biggest things that you got to do if you're if you're prepping for lacrosse and you're a swimmer okay one Lacrosse players need strong lats. They need strong abs. Two, okay, and I have the number three up, and I just said th I just said two. Uh, two, uh, if we're looking at that carryover, then swimmers need strong lats. Swimmers need strong abs. Three, okay, we need to be explosive off the blocks. Lacrosse players have to be explosive. So you try to look at the strength characteristics that sort of mesh between lacrosse and swimming, and then you build the strength training program around that. That's exactly how you would sort of – divvy that up so that you can improve that long term and i would really start to focus on uh the the pull-ups the lat strength and the core strength first um 
Now, if we get in in here, uh, Nick says, "Yo, coach, I always think I'm if I'm focusing on one thing, bench or for example, for a program, then I'm missing out on other things, since my focus would be on bench. Am I weird for thinking this?" So, Nick, there's actually this paper right here, okay, and and I'm gonna hold that as close as I can get to the screen, okay? That paper, all right. I'm gonna hide my face so that it can refocus right there. That paper goes into looking at block periodization versus mixed periodization. So peak strength is mixed periodization where we're going to be focusing on power, strength, hypertrophy in the same block. Okay. Block periodization. You will just focus on like strength. Then the next program, maybe you focus on power. Next program, maybe focus on vertical jump. That paper will show you that in the mixed periodization model for 10 weeks with 22 different athletes, they had greater results Pec size, quad size, bench press strength. Um, I forget what else there was. Power development, all in the mixed periodization model. Now, the only thing that was more positive in the block was the vertical jump had a better growth pattern. The vertical jump still grew inside the mixed program, but not to the rate that it did during the block. So what I would do then, Nick, is I would say at least... Two of your focuses per program should be, let's say your vertical jump sucks. Well, you focus on vertical jump and then you would focus on you know, increasing your bench press. You're going to be perfectly fine. Again, I would recommend you get some type of setup program uh, to help with that periodization, to help with that model, to build that out over at least, at least 12 to 16 weeks. I think that's one thing I've got to just hammer home here is that a lot of us want to do training and I'm going to bring in the marathon stuff. A year ago, I could barely run three miles. Now I just ran 26.2 miles, but it took me 52 weeks. We go back to the example of the Alec Wilkins giveaway. We just gave Alec Wilkins 200 plus workouts for free, 200 plus workouts for free. If he does all of them, he's going to get stronger. He's going to get faster. He's going to get more explosive and he's going to get bigger. Okay. It took 52 weeks for me to be able to run. Listen to that Liberty Bell for me to be able to run a marathon. If I didn't try it wouldn't have happened. So if we're only going to train for 16 weeks or if we're only going to train for eight weeks or if we're only going to train for four weeks, it's not going to be beneficial. You've got to stick to it for 16 weeks, 20 weeks, 24 weeks, 30 weeks, 40 weeks. And that's what we use. We use, you know, we call it executing the four for four. Okay, so you execute the four for four. That's the champion's way. That's what the champions will do. They come into the gym minimum four days a week for a month, okay? And they do that for they train four days a week for four years, and then they do it for another four years, and then they do it for another four years, and that's how they become champions. So think about it that way. Obi-Wan Quixote, my favorite name in our chats. How many days a week should a youth female judo player lift? Given a five-day uh, week, a five-day per week practice schedule is one lifting day or one athlete day enough? I would say one lifting day, one athlete day is probably enough. I probably would put in... Maybe a day of like push-ups and pull-ups, uh, something along those lines, um, and that would help. Is mixed periodization conjugate? No, that would not be conjugate. It's different because especially there was weightlifting exercises in it. So I would not term it that. Um, these colors don't run swim or bike. Yes, uh, it's a USA meme. 100% that's a US meme. Back up. Hey, coach, do you think doing 10 minutes of abs after every workout is a good idea? I'm trying to build a six pack. What would you recommend? Okay, so if we're trying to build a six pack, we are trying to build a six pack. Okay, the best way to build a six pack first, dial in your nutrition, get your freaking nutrition dialed in to a T. Recognize that you can start if you start in a 400 caloric deficit and you just slowly build that up. 400 to 450 calorie deficit to 500 calorie deficit. That's going to get you a six pack ab faster than anything. Okay. 100% dial in your nutrition. The next aspect is that really, in my opinion, the only place that you'll see abs really become hypertrophic is typically going to be your side. Okay. Your side abs here. And you'll see that in throwers. They almost have these like built out love handles, but when they get really lean, you can see those muscles are just bulging from all the hypertrophy work that they've done, all the reps that they've done rotating. Um, now, I still think it's fine to train your abs. I think it's fine to do abs after every workout. I think five to 10 minutes a day isn't going to beat you up, but you've got to dial in your nutrition first and foremost. So the results are in for the first survey. Should Dane uh, do an ultra marathon? 
61% of you said, no, I should get swole. And 38% said, yes. Now, I think what my goal is currently is that I'm laying out, I'm trying to figure out, okay, if I could bench, let's say 405 for a couple of reps, how many sets a week do I need to do to get that done? So if I could get into the gym and lift three days a week, okay, and I can do a leg lift on Sunday and then twice a week I do upper body work, can I still hold like 25 to 35 miles a week of running? So that's sort of like my current goal because I do want to do another marathon. I want to do a couple of the races. I actually ran a five mile race on Thanksgiving. Um, hey, Dane, what's your take on naps? Is there an ideal length of naps uh, of time? And is there a way to avoid the grogginess that follows? I think the grogginess that follows oftentimes comes back to how long you're napping. I think if you can nap for 15 to 20 minutes, that's typically going to be a sweet spot. There's some research that up to 30 minutes is also beneficial. Um, so I think that I think that it is important to to look at at naps in an effective manner. Uh, one of my guys is in the transfer portal. I'm getting a lot of phone calls currently. Um, I think that it's important to look at naps. I think they're great. I think they're absolutely fantastic. I think most people should be napping for 20 to 30 minutes every single day. Uh, and I think that if you do the nap before 2 o'clock, that's another factor. I think it's very similar to caffeine. I recommend napping by 12 or 1 o'clock, and then, you know, then you, you're you going to feel really good the rest of the day. I think oftentimes people nap too late in the day or they nap for too long. Uh, I think that's a big factor that people don't discuss. I want to see Dane do a 500-pound deadlift in a sub-five-hour marathon in the same day. That's a good challenge. It would almost be – I mean, I would probably prefer – to do that deadlift earlier in the day to do that first and then go run a marathon. That's what I would want to do. Woke up with massive middle back pain and couldn't train any tips on getting rid of back pain quick. What causes it as well? I think, uh, back pain's an interesting thing. You know, Lincoln actually just tweaked his, his shoulder here. He was like looking like this and was doing a jerk and now it hurts him to turn his, his neck here. And I think that one of the things about back pain is that it happens so acutely, meaning like, it's a very quick thing and it might be like three or four days of where you feel like total trash and then it subsides. Now, uh, long-term chronic work from doing snatches or cleans or squats or single leg squats or anything. If you're doing it all the time, like five days a week, like a weightlifter or power lifter, weightlifters and power lifters are going to be more prone to lower back issues. Same with throwers because there's so much deceleration on that lower left side if they're right-handed. Um, so that's going to be typically more chronic. What I would recommend is really hammer in on your overall mobility work. Uh, try to make sure you're sleeping well, and that's also going to optimize your overall recovery, which should ideally lead to preventing that. Um, hey, coach, I would love to know how can I strength train for judo? What would We do have some judo videos. Um, I would focus on a lot of grip work. I would do a lot of something like a dumbbell snatch, power snatches. I'd do front squats. Um I would even probably do deadlifts with, uh, I would probably even do deadlifts with a fat bar to help with the grip work. I would do throws with a medicine ball and I would do some pummeling exercises. I would do a lot of dumbbell benches as well. Um, hey coach, how to increase strength and super speed and punches. Please tell me the exercises, pause dumbbell, sna uh, pause dumbbell bench, uh, explosive pushups, pushups to boxes, uh, med ball, shot put throws, uh, even dumbbell throws. Uh, greetings from Peru. What's up, Peru? Love it down there. One of the coolest countries, I think, in the world. I love your channel, by the way, with real useful information. You're doing so well. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks for the answer earlier on isometrics. May that be a good video idea. There are only body weight workouts on YouTube that matter. So if you guys want, maybe we should make a poll out of this. Should we do like top six crazy isometric exercises that you guys can use? Uh, I, I like stuff like that. I really, we have a couple isometric movements, uh, that we've done videos on, but I think a, a in-depth one could be good for, for showing you guys how to break through plateaus. Um, yeah, I think that'd be fantastic. How many days should high school football players, a player that plays wide receiver dumbbell or dumbbell, geez, wide receiver D back work out throughout a week and how many hours of sleep, sleep eight to 10 hours, uh, four days a week in the weight room, sleep eight to 10 hours, four days a week in the weight room. Now, I'm hoping that this works here. So I'm going to get into, um, let's get into that video react. And I also just realized that I think I might have a research paper that we're supposed to be covering, but I am not 
going to have enough time to cover that. So if I get over here, okay, I'm going to get into, we're going to demonstrate, we're going to show you guys something crazy here. So if I turn this off, okay, check this one out. And a lot of you guys were asking, let's see, boom, there's Jan, played for the Titans, boom, boom. Okay, so. Let's go back here. Okay, this is where some of you guys were talking about you know, plyometric stuff. Um, Gwiz jump into that side lateral, into a bilateral, bilateral, quick reaction. So if we're building that muscle, uh, we, we're learning how to be as active, as explosive as possible, both sides. And, okay, that's my – oh, geez, now we're getting a freaking ad. So – I think one of the things that we've got to think about too, this is this is not planned, that should not be happening. Um, <laughs> sorry guys, is that I wanted to share this so that you guys could take this movement, okay? Let's take this, gosh, get these ads off of the freaking site. If we're trying to focus on being as explosive as possible, right? Here we go. Boom. We need to be able to move rapidly. We've got to be explosive on both sides. Okay. So here we go. There's Jan. Big dog. Big dog Jan. You guys like my Kenya pants? Okay. So we're in the deep position here. This is where we're going to focus on rate coding, uh, being as reactive as possible. We get a little forward, forward lean. That's going to be a stretch shortening position. Uh, again, this is my right leg is a little weak. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay, linebacker stunt series. So <laughs> that's classic. So we've got to think there, how can we react as quickly as possible and train uh, uh, joint angles, train specific movement patterns that will actually lead to better performance out on a football field or out on the lacrosse field. So, you know, we had that question earlier about lacrosse-based training uh, and swimming. And so what I would do is I would look at uh, an event or a, or a, let's say using something like a seated, I'm seated on a box, okay? And I want to help improve my, my time off the wall as a swimmer and also improve my explosiveness as a lacrosse player. Okay, so you can do seated box jumps or seated hurdle hops. That's going to help. Now, keys to building athletic muscle. Here's some more movements that you guys can use. This would be more of like a reflexive exercise. Okay, and this would be something that you do specifically, let's say, on athlete day. So here, and you see that ankle that I'm using. I'm, I'm using an isometric action in that ankle, and I'm trying to drive forward. Okay, so the next thing here, hurdle hops. We're trying to be as explosive as possible. Remember... Okay, so here we go. Hide and jump. This is great. Boom. Good for speed skaters. Um, good for running backs. Good for lacrosse. Good for basketball players. Okay. So then we got to start to focus on. Good. All right. And then one more here that I wanted to share with you guys and see what you guys thought. Now, a couple of you guys had had asked questions about, okay, how do we build out a program? Well, right here is a day four uh, impulse system that you can use. That if you don't want to use peak strength, okay, and this is exactly what we did to develop peak strength. And if you don't want to use it, use this template. It's in this workout. Go watch the work, the video, and write this down. And then you guys can help, uh, can can continuously build that out and improve that that training. So it's like rapid fire cleans. You get into single leg front squats. You get into pull ups. Um, let's see if we have. Okay, there's Eric Favors snatch 165 kilos. Yaime, absolute freight train, moving it fast, right? Sam, moving it fast. We've got to think, what going back to that discussion around impulse uh, versus speed strength, there's Kate just absolutely smashing, Jake absolutely smashing. Now, all of this stuff is moving things at high speeds. So if you want to get more athletic, you want to get more wired, you want to have that athletic muscle, there's Sam benching a ton, there's Jen, look at that linebacker series we created. All of that stuff is, let's watch that Jan one again. I like that one. Okay, Jan's. Okay, what is that? That's like five. That's five hundred, I think. Pad bench and five hundred. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. So, I wanted to share a lot of that 
with you guys so that you could see uh, some of those key aspects. I'm going to get back into the comments. Is it okay to cut at 13? Uh, cut weight at 13? I would not cut weight at 13 unless you're like struggling with with your with your nutrition and there's other underlying issues i would not worry about that i I would not be concerned about that be more concerned in showing up to the gym consistently tracking your macros knowing what you're eating on a regular basis i think that's a big aspect around that young age Uh, what to train to get explosive and also manage the load on the knees after a surgery and now being ready to train i would say slowly build back don't do movements that bug your knees okay uh, avoid them for the time being do slow eccentrics that can also help and then slowly build into some of the some of the jumping uh, aspects obi-wan quixote coming in given latest research on cervical spine injuries could you do a video on safe neck strengthening exercises we could do that um Obi-Wan, can you post in here in the chat some research that you feel we should be analyzing or that you have seen? I would like to see like the the cervical spine injuries or uh, what you're discussing specifically just so that we could uh, we could use it. Coach, this is from Eli. Just got done at the gym, hit a 300 pound close grip bench PR for two. Then I hit 305 for four and with a little bit of help on the fifth. Peak strength is insane. This is directly from Eli Noriega. Eli, that's awesome. That's going to keep building. You're going to keep getting a monster bench. You're going to keep improving all that strength. Uh, Oyama, start doing clap push-ups every day. Work up to 50 push-ups a day. Your bench is going to blow up 100%. That's any tips on how to increase my bench press. It's currently stuck at 70 kilos. Always smash those clap push-ups first. Do a video on isometric exercises. Yes, 87% of you said that. More CrossFit, 8% said that. Nope, 4%. I think that's a that's a resounding uh, 87% means we should be doing an isometric video. I got to start thinking through and get really creative. Um, yeah, Obi-Wan Quixote, I would say uh, if you guys are interested, uh, before we continue with more of these Q&As, if you want deeper dive discussions on all aspects of training and coaching specific to your goals, uh, consider becoming a channel member. Uh, one thing that you guys could do is, you know, we meet every single Friday with direct tips. We break down some research papers uh, and we look at specific things. It's a really positive group of everybody who comes in. There's not a ton of us in there. Uh, we're just analyzing research papers, how we can apply this into training, how we're going to use this inside peak strength, even, um, to help you guys become better athletes and better coaches. It's 10 bucks a month, uh, a full one hour lecture every single week. It's less than the price of a cup of coffee. Uh, And all you have to do is you have to click join uh, if you're on a desktop or click the link in the description to become a channel member uh, today. So this is all on YouTube, becoming a channel member on YouTube. We also, you know, I did want to bring this up on, on, on Instagram. There is a broadcast channel on Instagram. And I've always been interested, like, would we get broadcast channel stuff done if we ran if we ran a broadcast channel on instagram the way we do our youtube channel and our discord i wonder what would happen but if you don't want to spend the 10 bucks guys if you don't want to spend that 10 bucks you can still check out the garage rank podcast on youtube and all other streaming uh yeah all other streaming platforms we did record two research videos before this where i broke down some stuff on speed work i broke down some stuff on athletic muscle um Eli is currently cutting weight right now, and he just bench pressed 305. Um, DeAndre Swift season. Coffee. So so the math is if it's 10 bucks a month and we do four of them, you divide 10 by, f- uh, by four and you get 250. Okay, so 250 is less than a cup of coffee. That's how the math works. Uh, will rack pulls help me break my plateau off the dead? I, dude, I'll be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of rack pulls. I've actually got a video from, I want to say like 20, 2009, 2010, where I did a the triple crown deadlift challenge. And it's, you do a trap bar deadlift at, I think it's two and a half, or 2.75 body weight. I did a trap bar for 10, straight bar for 10, and I did a rack pull for 10. Um, I'll be honest, dude. I, the rack pull is so easy. You can pull so much weight, and it just—I've—I've I've always thought like a bottom or a, a top-down 
deadlift is much better than than the rack pull. Um, thanks for the input regarding getting a six pack. I got a bug crawling towards me. Um, oh, actually, Isaiah, peak strength has been amazing. I love it so much. My cleans have literally gone from nothing to 185 pounds, and they're continuing to grow. Uh, backup six pack his problem is he's trying to put on a little bit of weight and he's on a bulk as opposed to a caloric deficit in this case got any other recommendations for exercises um i would say ab roller v ups pass the plate what eccentric exercises are best for the knees and legs spanish squats slow eccentric front squats um backward sled pull sled pushes where what are the best videos for football weightlifting ironically we just filmed best gym exercises or best exercises for football and that's going to be going up on the peak strength tra channel uh if you guys are dude you guys should check out peak strength channel starting to blow up it's up over twenty thousand subscribers we're getting good uh watch time uh you guys tuned in a lot to the past like five or six videos they're doing crazy well so we appreciate that so much um as we continue to grow the channel Dane loves going into sometimes uh, solidarity. I feel bad for you guys because I just tend to go into them too in depth, and I I get too into like my strain my my own strain of thought or yeah my own thought process instead of like trying I'm trying to teach and help you guys learn the content of the actual research paper while also helping you see how I think through it uh, to then apply it. Um, Obi-Wan Quixote, welcome to the archive live streams. There we go. All right. Um, if only there were like 12 videos on football for garage strength and peak strength. Yeah, that's the one thing too. It's like, dude, we have more football videos than anywhere on the planet, I think. I wish your opinion on cutting weight very slowly. I wish your opinion on cutting weight very slowly, losing 10% body fat in six months, and then once you get the six-pack, rebuild muscle and strength. Views on McGill's big three prior to lifting, I think they're good. Good exercises for the vertical jump, hang power snatch, trap bar jumps, hang cleans, front squats, uh, bounds, double leg bounds, hurdle hops, depth drop to hurdle hop, stair jumps, dumbbell jumps. I just gave you like 10. All of those are great. How to strengthen my legs when I'm a badminton player. Absolutely. So this is for Mi Mr. Scray. Mr. Scray, did you see that over on Peak Strength? We recently did a badminton video, strength training for badminton. It's all about uh, lateral movement, being as explosive as possible, having a stable sh shoulder girdle, and also um, just that trunk control, 100% that trunk, con trunk control. Now let's see. Hey, Coach, what lifts and what type of workout structure should boxers do on should boxers do on the peak strength app what lifts and what type of work well the workout structure would be would sh would show you peak strength would show you that workout structure uh first uh and also peak strength would would demonstrate you know let's say you do um a dumbbell snatch the guys on instagram are getting a bug crawling over their their screen right now um so you would see, you know, you would have all of that laid out in peak strength if you're if you're in boxing. And Isaiah just came in. Oh yeah, I think I asked this for a while back. But what should my one rep max be at for wrestling? I'm at 150 pounds. So one rep max for what exercise? I would ask that question. Big Bergs, what's the difference between garage strength and peak strength YouTube channels? So some of the big stuff for us is um, using garage strength for like bigger picture work like real big picture like this is how you set up like a workout this is like the best uh five exercises for uh your deadlift these are the best five exercises to increase leg strength these are the seven different exercises to blow up your hamstrings that's what we're trying to do there on peak strength we're trying to dive deeper into some of the research we're, we're trying to react to some fitness influencers so if you guys have fitness influencers you want us to react to we're trying to do more of that we're also trying to develop like all right, this is what this research paper says. This is how we use it in our training. So it gets a little bit more nitty gritty. It's a little bit more in depth uh, to try and answer those problems or help those problems. Uh, and yeah, more sports specific as well. Uh, would like to see Dane run a Spartan beast. That would be tough. Last week you said I was posterior dominant. Does that mean I can work on my quads a bit more? Yes, for sure. Um, definitely work on your quads a bit more. There is a peak strength video on table tennis, 100%. Uh, 
Um, guys, thanks. Should football players train their necks? 100%. That's another, uh, another seems to be another question that we're coming up with. Uh, how, how, sh- how heavy should movements be in the exposure phase of parabolic periodization? I would say anywhere from like 65 to 82%, something along those lines. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'm very grateful for you guys to show up to this week's live stream. We did have some technical issues beforehand because we have like a windstorm right now, which is just blowing out the uh, the Wi-Fi. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, athletic muscle or power muscle for first responders. I would say athletic muscle. I would say athletic muscle because you got to be really explosive uh, and still be strong. Um <sighs> I'd say dumbbell snatch, trap bar jumps, power snatches, front squats. Uh, We do have a video on peak strength on that as well. All right. Until next time. Peace.